Good morning. Take two on welcome to United Methodist Church of Plano, Illinois. <clears throat> We're glad that you're here with us this morning. I uh, want to give you a heads up. If uh, you want to go back and listen to some of the our, our previous videos, you can go back to either on Facebook, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel. The address of that is the United Methodist Church of Plano, Illinois, or IL. You can see all of our previous Sunday services, and you can see all the all the Monday through Thursday uh, things we've been doing. Hey, Edna, good morning. Also, you can go to our website, umcplano.org. You can catch the audio for all of our Sunday services and uh, some of the videos that we began um, in, in March. March 22nd was our first live stream. So you can go back all the way to then and catch up if you want. This morning, I'd like to take us uh, uh, with a little walk through Psalm 118 and Psalm 119. Now, obviously, I'm not going to cover all of those, uh, just a portion of each of those uh, to encourage our heart, to strengthen us, and to realize that our hope and our strength and our peace comes from Christ. And that, uh, look, there's no doubt that we are in a difficult time in our country. I might be standing out here in a beautiful sunny day, but we know that there's there's issues of racism that uh, permeate our country and there, there's vitriol and, and there's uh, things going on that are, are not helpful and there are things that are going on that are extremely helpful. But we need to know that our hope, that our comfort and our direction comes from Christ and that we're called to stand in the gap and stand against injustices in all its forms as we represent Christ here on earth. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Psalm 118 and 119 for those reasons. So let's, uh, let's go to Psalm 118. Psalm 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Oh, that's part of 17, sorry. Verse 2. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who hear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Now listen to verse 5. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. Now that psalm is written by a particular person in a situation, a difficult situation of people who are against him. But the principle we take away from this is that the Lord is on our side. What side is that? That's the side of wanting the best for humankind, the people that he created. He's on the side of peace and justice. He's on the, on the side of salvation and renewed hope in the lost. He's on the side of reconciliation. But verse 5 is what did it for me. Out of my distress. Out of my distress I called upon the Lord and the Lord was there. That's an encouragement to me and I hope it is for you. No matter what our distress is, we can call upon the Lord and he is there. Now let's jump to verse, to chapter 119. Now if you don't know, chapter 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, some 176 verses. We definitely are not going to cover all of them today, just a handful here uh, by way of encouraging our hearts and our souls. Psalm chapter 119, beginning in verse 1. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. So the writer here is saying, look, God, you've set out these precepts. You've set out these rules, these guidelines. 
these statutes. I can't do them. I, I can't keep them without you. You must do them in me. He's crying out, oh, that my ways may be steadfast. That's a cry that we have today, that we might be steadfast in living God's word, especially now more than ever. Then I shall not be put to blame, put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Now listen to verse 25. This is Psalm 119, verse 25. My soul clings to the dust. Sometimes we might feel like that. Being separated from one another, being fearful of a, of a virus, being in the midst of racial tensions in our country, we might feel that our soul is clinging to dust, but he says, give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. This person cried out to God, Lord, it's dusty. I, I'm clinging to the dust. I need you. And guess what? The Lord heard. Make me understand your ways and your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. See, the important thing here is, is God's word. Reading it, studying it, burying it in our heart, clinging to it when we're in the midst of trouble or despair or we don't know what to do next. God gave us his word to keep us encouraged. He gave us hope. That he can be accessed at any time through prayer and through his word no one can take that away from us and when we're caught off guard without our word in our hand without our phone where we can look up a verse if we follow the writer's precepts we can have it in our heart and recall scripture in time of need hey kathy joe good morning but i want to turn to a familiar verse that many might remember. Psalm 119, 105. Your word, or the version you may have memorized, is thy word, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This was written thousands of years ago, but it still holds true today. God's word is a light to our path. It's food for our soul. When we're dry and dusty, we can drink if it's truth. And maybe our current situation has caused you to be like dry ground. Have you ever seen that when after a drought or some uh, weeks without rain and you see the, the rain come down and you think, oh, it's great, but the ground is so hard. It's almost like a waxed vehicle. It beads up and runs off. It doesn't saturate. It doesn't get down to the roots. But God's word, when we read it, will saturate our soul, will break down our hard exterior edge, our shell, and it will water our soul. Even in the midst of national turmoil, our hope isn't in politics. Our hope is in politicians. They're needed. They have a role. They've been ordained by God to care for and lead the nation. But our hope lies with Christ. And it lies with each of us. Not just who listen to this video, but believers and unbelievers being willing to have Christ come in, soften us, and change us into his likeness that's when we're going to see real change but in the meantime drink deeply from this and i promise you you will not be disappointed let's pray lord god we are grateful that after thousands of years you have preserved your word that you've given us this Bible 
You've given us your written word. Jesus, you are the living word. I ask now that you rain down your peace and healing upon our nation. That you would connect yourself, the living word, with your written word. That you would penetrate the hearts and minds of regular people, of our politicians, and those in leadership, in religion, or in government. That you would rain down your grace, your wisdom, and your healing. Chronicles, you tell us if your people, called by your name, will be humble and seek your face, you will heal their land. That means that we, your people, need to get right with you first and then cry out to you for the healing of our nation. Lord, you see our nation. You see the distress that we're in. Only you can ultimately fix it. Jesus, come. Rescue us. Forgive us. Give us a new way. Show us your path. Heal our nation. Heal the hurting. Give us eyes to see those who need you. Help us not to walk past people and disregard them. But when you put a need in front of us, help us to see it. Help us to feel it. And help us to act on what you're telling us to do. Jesus, you're our hope. Come and rescue us. We pray it all, Father, in the conquering name of Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. Amen, everyone. Hey, Linda, good morning. It's great to see you here. We will see you live Sunday morning at 10 o'clock from the sanctuary. And then on uh, Monday morning, you'll see a pre-recorded message. Uh, I'll be out of the office for a little bit on Monday, so you have a pre-recorded message, and then we'll be back uh, live on Tuesday. But may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may his peace and his love be a cold drink of water for your soul today. Go in his name. Amen.